we're learning all about the letter T and the sounds the letter T make. Get ready to time travel to the terrific world of the letter T. Uh-oh, it looks like we've entered a thunder tunnel. Make sure you're strapped in tight. This is going to be a turbulent ride. Hold on. It's okay, good thing we have Timothy, the terrific pilot. He'll get us through this. The one thing about time traveling that is the most terrifying is when you meet up with the T-Rex. Watch out, hold on tight. Whoa, that was a close one. Great job, guys, we've made it through. We made it past the T-Rex, and now we are traveling through time. Do you see all of the time around us? That's a lot of time and a lot of thought. Next stop is Tennis Ball Land. Now entering Trumpetville. Through the tents we go. And what do we see? A bunch of tangerines. And what better way to celebrate the letter T than with a train song? Please give this video a thumbs up. It helps our channel grow. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Give that big red button a smash for Ash. Board the rock and roll train. Can you hear the rock and roll train? <laughs> All aboard the rock and roll train. Come and get on the rock and roll train. All aboard the rock and roll train. Come and get on the rock and roll train. Watch the wheels go round and round. Hear it make that choo choo sound. Conductor's in the front, he's in charge. The caboose is the very last car Shovel some coal into the fire Come and get on the rock and roll train It's time to spell train, everybody Repeat after me T You just spelled train. One more time, everybody. Watch your wheels go round and round. Hear it make that choo choo sound. Conductor's in the front, he's in charge. The caboose is the very last car. Shovel some coal into the fire. Come and get on the rock and roll train. Special thanks to Roland Leonard for creating the song. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Coming up next is story time, where you'll meet Thurman the turtle. The 
The following is a foreword from the author, Artie Knapp. The story you are about to read was inspired by KPMG LLP's Living Green program. Carbon footprint is a very complex topic for the young mind to grasp. It is my hope that by reading Thurman's story, young readers will continue to develop their reading skills and begin to understand how the personal choices they and others make affect the environment. Living Green, A Turtle's Quest for a Cleaner Planet Written by Artie Knapp Everyone had gathered for the big day. The wedding of Miss Taylor Turdley was an event that every turtle within a hundred yards vowed not to miss. Everything had seemed perfect, too, but then it happened. Litter suddenly blanketed the wedding party, even the bride and groom. Bags of trash had been thrown from the overpass that towered over the creek. But such behavior was no longer going to be tolerated, at least not by Taylor's brother, Thurman. As Thurman glanced over at his sister, who was in tears, banana peels covered her wedding dress and shell. That's it! Enough is enough! exclaimed Thurman with his fist aimed high. Forget it, Thurman! said his father. There is nothing we can do about the human's son. Forget it? How can you say that, Dad? Something has to be done. It's time for action, Thurman said. And with that, Thurman told everyone he had to go. Where are you going, Thurman? asked his mother. I'm going to put a stop to this, Mom. Don't go, shouted a voice from the wedding party. You'll end up in a kid's fishbowl and you'll barely have room to stretch. You'll be soup, Thurman, shouted another. As voices continued to ring out about the dangers that awaited him, Thurman was undeterred. He was determined to make a difference. How exactly? Well, Thurman wasn't sure. He just knew he couldn't sit by as the land he loved became cluttered with trash. Traveling a distance of any length takes quite a while for a turtle. So, to make headway on his journey, Thurman swam with the current of a nearby river. After a couple of days adrift, Thurman finally saw signs of human civilization. And everywhere he looked there was trash. Lots and lots of trash. Dumping garbage where they didn't live was bad enough, but Thurman was surprised to see people living in it themselves. Garbage was in their water. It littered the streets where they drove their automobiles, and it was even where children played. As Thurman pondered how he was going to address the crisis, several people were suddenly approaching him. Fearing for his safety, he quickly turned to hide, and then everything turned dark. Thurman had stuck his head into a muddied plastic bottle that had been left on the riverbed. Eager to escape, he pulled with all of his might, but without success. A science teacher from a nearby elementary school was now standing close to the river with her students. They were on a field trip to help the environment. The children would be planting trees, and a local newspaper reporter was on hand to cover the event. Okay, before we get started, who knows the answer? asked Mrs. Thornberry. Several of the students raised their hands. Yes, Susie, said Mrs. Thornberry. It's our carbon footprint, said the young girl. That's right, Susie. Very good. Even though each and every one of us has our own carbon footprint, it affects everyone and everything around us. As her students began breaking ground to plant trees, Mrs. Thornberry continued to speak about the different effects that carbon footprints have on the environment. 
She reminded the children of the pollution that comes from factories and automobiles and the carbon dioxide that is released into the air because of them. By planting trees that day, the children would be combating carbon dioxide by putting more oxygen back in the air. Does everyone remember the four R's that we discussed in class? asked Mrs. Thornberry. Yes, Mrs. Thornberry said her students in unison. Rethink, reduce, reuse. But then young Robbie Pursley shouted, Recycle! before any of the other students could say the last word. You see, Robbie couldn't contain his excitement. He had stumbled across a plastic bottle, but it was no ordinary bottle. It had a turtle stuck in it. As everyone came over to view the bottle, Robbie held it up in the air for all to see. The local news reporter captured the moment with his camera. As Thurman began to feel his body being tugged, he feared the worst. And then suddenly, the brightness of the sun shone over him. Wow, look at him, said Robbie. One by one, the students touched Thurman's shell. Even through his fear, Thurman felt comforted when hearing what the children were doing for the environment. The anger that had driven him to leave his home suddenly faded away. Because of the actions of the children that day, Thurman knew there was hope for a cleaner world. Can I keep him, Mrs. Thornberry? I don't think that is a good idea, Robbie. This is his home. He needs to be set free. Robbie sighed, oh, but did as his teacher requested. He wiped the mud off of Thurman's shell and released him. After he had finally reached home, Thurman was greeted as a hero. He learned that his rescue had made the front page of the local newspaper. Inspired by the story, every school in the region began cleaning up the trash that littered the area to include rivers and ponds. Thurman just didn't understand why everyone back home made such a big fuss. Besides, there was much work to do and getting stuck in a bottle wasn't exactly what he had planned. But Thurman's family reminded him of the courage it took to do what he did. His quest for change was proof that one individual can make a difference and that each and every one of us should try. It's up to you. Okay kids, I hope you learned something new. I hope you learned that littering and throwing your trash anywhere is bad, not only for you, but it affects the environment and the creatures that live on it. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It would help our channel grow. And also, if you're not a subscriber, ask your parents if it's okay to subscribe. It's free.